So in terms of teaching, your job is to access and harness and use their working memory to build their long-term memory. And so your job as teachers, really, and we call it working memory, but we can easily call it thinking. Your job as teachers, or our job as teachers, if we're looking at teaching through memory perspective or memory lens, is to manage thinking for as much as the lesson as possible. To manage thinking. And so if we were approaching our teaching through the lens of memory, if we were thinking about planning lessons, we'd be thinking about what do I want my students to be thinking about at each point during the lesson? And that's a hugely powerful question that you can begin to ask yourself if you don't already do that. What do I want my students to be thinking about at each point during the lesson? Because if they're not thinking about it, there's no way they're going to be able to learn it. And so there are two kind of main ways we can manage thinking or approach the management of thinking. The first is to manage how our students think and the second is to manage what they think about. And we're going to start off by just looking at managing how they think. Okay. Now, if our main job is to manage students' thinking, how well is our own model of how thinking works, of how thinking operates? Do we know how thinking works? Do we have a really clear idea of how to harness it? Again, this is something I think there's a lot of potential to, to look into and to spend a bit of time trying to unpack. But it's one of the areas that is weaker when it comes to there being lots of available research on okay, how to actually manage thinking. Um, one of the, the few things that we do understand is that there is a gatekeeper to thinking. And if we can get friendly with the gatekeeper, we, um, we can make a lot of progress. And that gatekeeper is, um, is attention. <coughs> attention, yeah, the, the obligatory kitten picture. <laughs> attention dictates what we think about, what goes into a working memory. And I don't know how much you've thought about it before, but if you do stop and think about it, you know that attention and what students pay attention to is a massive thing in your classrooms, isn't it? What they pay attention to is massive, really, really massive. And of course, the reason is because unless they pay attention to the right things, they can't think about the right things, and they're not going to learn the right things. So actually, our first protocol is to try and think about how we manage attention. Now, there are three strategies that we can use. And the first is about managing the amount of information available in our classrooms. And this is something that I think as a profession, not just as math teachers, there is a huge variation in the, the kind of practice that's out there. I walk into classrooms where the whole of the front wall and all the walls around are jam-packed full with posters and displays and information that is competing for the attention of the students in the room. And actually, if you wanted to manage your students' thinking, manage their attention, orient their attention, what you really want to do is to eliminate some of that competition. You want to get rid of it and leave only those things that you want them to be thinking about. If you've got a poster up here on Circle Theorem, but today you're looking at the area of a triangle, then that poster is competing for their thought, for their thinking. Yeah. And of course, we get very good at filtering out unnecessary information. Okay, that's one of the things our working memory is really good at. But at the same time, there is still a cost associated with that. We still have to exert resources to filter stuff out. 
So make it easy for your students, make it easy for yourself. Eliminate superfluous or unnecessary distracting information. And that information exists in lots of different places. It exists in the physical environment. You know, I've used the display as an example. But it also exists in the social environment. When people come to the door, when you're mid-flow or your learners are mid-flow, oh, excuse me, sir, can I just... No, 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 no. Just wait outside the door, look in through the door longingly, and whenever we're ready, then uh, I'll, come and, I'll come and talk to you. Okay. I think a really interesting culture that we have in schools, and I've got a feeling that... Um, over in Shanghai and Singapore, they don't tolerate that kind of distraction. Um, and actually, because there's an idea that students' thinking is, is the most important thing, and actually anything that distracts them from thinking about the maths, <coughs> it, it, it shouldn't be tolerated. Um, so we've got distractions within the environment, but we've also got distractions within the subject, within the content as well. I've seen... PowerPoint slides and smart note slides that are full of all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. Um, clip art. <laughs> clip art. Don't get me started on clip art. Okay. Uh, anything, anything on here that is not what you want students to be thinking about is a distraction. Similarly, any task or activity that you give out, if it encourages students to think about anything that you don't want them to be thinking about, that's a distraction. If I give my students a task to create a PowerPoint presentation on a certain idea, on Circle Theorem, for example, they spend a lot of their time thinking about how to make a PowerPoint presentation rather than thinking about the Circle Theorem. So actually, that task has got lots and lots of distraction baked into it. Now obviously, we can't remove all of the information available. And we wouldn't want to either, OK? There's lots of, lots of, there's lots of good stuff, and there's lots of useful human information that surrounds us. Um, what we want to do then with the information that is left, the available information, we want, to, we want to direct or orient attention towards the right bits at the right times. Okay. And you go to a theater, a movie theater, you see that they do this really well. Simple things such as changing the contrast so that the rest of the information is less available. You can't see it as easily. Orients attention towards the things that we want people to see. Very simply, just pointing at something or even looking at something. Okay, We're hardwired to track gears. All of these methods can allow us to help direct attention and attention is really important because attention dictates what people think about. And what people think about is what they learn. Um, I think there's, um, there's something in here as well about helping our students get better at managing their own attention and being more aware of that. Um, and people like John Mason have done a lot of great work around the practice of noticing and encouraging and helping our students to become better at noticing, noticing features, looking for things, looking for particular features on objects, objects of learning. And so I think it's not only your responsibility as a teacher to manage their attention but to help your students get better at managing and orienting their own attention.